We're going to start here with this navigation log for our, our hypothetical aircraft, which happens to be a Cessna 172 carrying 38 gallons of usable fuel. It's full, and it um, burns 8.7 gallons per hour. This really will be the first leg of a multi-leg flight, and we're just going to do the part from Kenai to Seward, Alaska. And you see the Latin long there to help you find it along the route, well, right next to the airport, is the Kenai VOR. And we have a calibrated airspeed of 109 knots. So let's get started and let's get out our plotter and sectional and um, fill in some of this. Oh, I suppose we could do this right there. Kenai, Seward, and let's put in the VOR with, of course, the Morse code for the ident. Now just to practice, we have 60, 34 north, 151, 15 west. There's Kenai in blue, controlled airport. Now over here we've got Seward, 68, and 149, 25 or so over here. And we're going to connect these two for our cross-country flight. Again, using our plotter, I can line them up center to center on the top or on the bottom edge. It really doesn't matter. We'll slide this plotter until the vertex of the plotter passes through a line of longitude. And then we'll zoom in for that. But while we're here, let's just do this. Let's just, there, center to center, 60 and a half. Oh, I'd say closest to, I'm going to call it 61 nautical miles, reading directly off our scale. Well, here's my plotter zoomed in with my route here, and it's a little arrow showing the direction. And I can look up here in that same direction. I've got the 90, which just tells me traveling this way, I'm using that top scale. I go over here, I see a 110. Oh, I suppose I'm going to need to see this. I'll enhance this line of longitude. Between 110 and 120, there's 115. This is 116. So I can read directly from the plotter, and I can read my true course is 116 degrees. Now, I did select an altitude, without getting too much discussion of VFR altitudes, of 7,500 feet. That obeys the VFR convention and when you are above 3,000 AGL. Now, we won't be above 3,000 AGL the whole time when we're over this glacier here, but um, it's good practice. We'll use a number like that, and we'll fill in a little bit more of our flight plan, and let's continue with this exercise. Okay, we've zoomed in on our nav log here, and, well, what we had before, we filled in this, remember? Kenai to Seward, and we filled in our VOR. Now we have something new. We've got our true course. We figured that out, and we're going to say direct, because we're flying directly from Kenai to Seward. So this is my true course. My true course will also go over here. And we also selected our altitude, 7,500 feet. Let's check on the weather. I'm going to search under NOAA winds aloft. And oh, first thing that I hit right here, this is what I'm looking for. I've got my lower 48 map here, as we call it. But um, I'm looking for Alaska, of course. Ah, I see right there. Homer and Anchorage. Well. Those would be the two closest locations. And here's, of course, the Anchorage winds aloft. But more importantly, the Homer. That's a little closer to us. We're going to use Homer. 3,000, 6,000, 9,000. Right there. But, um, let's first get a sketch of what we're doing. We have a true course of 116, you'll recall. Now, Regardless of what I choose, what altitude I choose, the wind is pretty consistent coming from 210. So I can visualize that. That's just about a perfect crosswind, just about right off our, 
our right wing. So um, that's it's not going to affect my altitude and the, of my choice. I could see a little more wind higher up, but I'd, I already said I wanted to be at 7,500 feet. So here is 6,000, here's 9,000. And let's just go between these two, one, two, and um, I think it's a good job for time for a little interpolation. So let's just say 210 at 15 knots, and we'll split the difference between positive 2 and negative 3. We'll call it 0. So there you go. That's our winds. Well, now we can add these winds from our interpolation, and we see right there we've got 210 at 150 degrees centigrade. Now it's time for the E6B. Well, here we've got our E6B already dialed in. Remember, we've got 7,500 feet, 0 degrees centigrade. And I'm going to say that we're standard, so make this a little easier. 7,500 right there. And we're going to line it up with the 0 degrees centigrade right there. And um, oh, you'd notice that, that, well, that does seem to be about the same as 7,500 density altitude. Well, that looks pretty sweet. Now, all we have to do is point to our calibrated airspeed. That's, that's 100, that's 110, that's 109. That's your calibrated, 109. And on the other side, that's pointing to about there, 120, 121, 122. So I'm going with 122 for my true airspeed. So we've got a couple more things we can fill in. And now let's find that wind correction angle. We're going to dial in that wind. I'll turn our card for our 210. Remember, everything here is in true. I'm going to read up 10. There's my 20 right there. I meant 15. 15 knots of wind. And we'll turn to our course. What was that course? 116, I can recall. 116 up there. And we're going to slide. If you notice, the, the red dot rotated to the right. And it's just about even with the ground speed. Well, that's interesting. Because my um, I've got 122 for true airspeed. And I'm reading off of this, and I'm seeing, well, maybe uh, 121 for ground speed. And we got 5, 6, 7 we'll say 7 degrees wind correction angle, 7 degrees right, plus 7. We can fill in most of our log here. After all, we now have, from the calculation side, 122 knots of true airspeed. We saw that, um, well, we're with our true course of 116, we have a 7 degree to the right, or plus 7 wind correction angle. That means our true heading will be 123, one, two, three, true, but you remember that isogonic line. This isogonic line right here, and that's 20 degrees east, it's right across our root. And east variation, of course, means I'm going to subtract that 20 from 123. It says so right in the legend here. That makes it easy. And then that'll give us 103. So we have a magnetic heading of 103. And for our purposes, I'm going to say that, um, well, we don't have any installation error, so I'm going to give that a zero, and we have a compass heading of 105. Now, early on, we also measured the length of this leg, and I'm going to say that this leg was 61, uh, 61 knots. I might write this differently if there were multiple legs, but right now I'm just writing it there. And a couple other things that, that we might fill in at this point. Um, let's suppose, hypothetically, I want to take off at 1,100 hours. Yes, and that would be in local time because you're, we're not flying, you know, we're not in Class A airspace down here. Um, and our fuel burn, 8.7 uh, gallons per hour. And I suppose we could do a little calculation and um, for our estimated time en route. Uh, time and distance. Now, again, can be done with your E6B. Or you could just use your conventional calculator, and you just have to think about it. Always wondering, multiply, divide, divide, multiply. Well, let me show you a surefire method, and this is actually an easy one. 
I want to end up with a unit of time. And let me see, I've, I've got I've got this um, I got this distance, 61 nautical miles. I'm traveling 122 knots. Well, let me remember what 122 knots is. It is 122 nautical miles per hour. If I express it this way, I can see using dimensional analysis that the units of nautical miles disappear and clearly I'm left with a half an hour. Now, I know a half an hour is 30 minutes, but it maybe it came up a little bit more awkward. You would then take this conversion factor and you see you can divide out the hours and you're left with the unit of minutes. Pretty slick. Let's finish off this row, which means we finish off this exercise right here. 121, 121 knots, that was our ground speed. And um, while well, we calculated that off our E6B, it's still an estimate though, and because we may end up going faster or slower, and that will be evidenced by such things as our, say our GPS, so we could record that, see how close we were. Now, uh, we calculated 30 minutes. I added two minutes for a climb out. So uh, we're saying estimated time en route, 32 minutes. Again, it could be different. That would be actual time en route. Now, estimated time of arrival, well, that's going to be pretty easy. If I start at 11 and I add 32 minutes, my estimated time of arrival will be 11.32. And of course, actual, as, in, as it implies, could be different as well. Burning 8.7 gallons per hour and flying for a half an hour, well, I'm barely going to put a dent in that 38 gallons I'm carrying, so I'll have 33.4 gallons remaining. And I, I think we're good to go on the rest of our cross-country 